Let's look at containers in C -sharp .net. Containers, that's a fancy way of saying we're going to store multiple objects. We'll start with a basic arrays, and then we'll look at multi-dimensional arrays, jagged arrays, uh, rectangular arrays. We'll look at the built-in linked list, hash tables, those kind of things, data, dictionaries, da 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 da, -da. But let's start with the basics. Let's start with arrays. I'm going to make some variable names here. My age, okay, my age 25, and to your age, I'll guess what your age is. You you're probably wiser than I am, so I'll give you 27. Int, and now no, let's do Susie's age. I was about to do another's age, but we'll do Susie's age. And we'll say Susie is 23. And int uh, Bobby's age. And Bobby's 34. And int Jim's age gets 36. And then let's print everybody's age. We'll print my age. CW, tab, tab, your age. Susie's age. Hopefully you're getting the feeling that uh, this is tedious. Bobby's age. And Jim's age. Control F5. There we have everybody's age. Like so. And say we want to add up everybody's age. We want the total of all of our ages combined. And so int total age gets my age plus your age plus Bobby's age plus Jim's age. Also, right line total age. Now we will print all the ages together 25, 27, 23, 34, 36. The total is 122. If you're paying attention, you probably thought, Jamie, you dropped Susie's age. Well, yes, <laughs> I did. When you have this many variables to track separately, quite often you'll forget a few of them, just like you forget children at the store and then you feel like a terrible parent. So that's kind of point one I want to make of storing variables like this is. Oh, what a headache. And now I have to keep track of Susie's age in here. And then control F5. Do I have them all right? My age, your age, Susie's age, Bobby's age, Jim's age. Looks like we might have it. Total age is 145. What a headache. What a headache. Now, all these variables are defined locally inside of main. And since they're defined locally, each one goes on the stack. And since they're on the stack, chances are the just-in-time compiler might have put these consecutively. You never know, but they're sitting in RAM on the stack next to each other. My age is right here. It's the first item, and your age is 27, 23, 34, yada, yada. And if I say I had a thousand people show up at my party, well, I, I don't want to. I don't want to track everybody's age separately. Like this, this is a pain. Hopefully, you can see this. This data structure or this container. I've kind of wrapped everything up in. We generally draw arrays like this, and I actually generally draw them horizontally. It doesn't really matter, but let me uh, convert this to a horizontal view. So I have 25, 27, 23, uh, 34, and 36. And I can pack all the ages into this data structure that we're going to call an array. And uh, I'll lose everybody's name according associated with their age, and if I wanted to keep track of their name with their age, then I'd have to use a dictionary. We'll talk about dictionaries They're much further on down in the playlist. But for now, I just want to track everybody's age, add them up, display all the ages, add them up, and, and display the total age to the screen. So I can pack all these values into a single object, and that object is called an array. Watch, I'll show you the syntax. I'm going to uh, come in here and I, I'll say I need an array of ints and we'll call them ages and to instantiate array we, just like we instantiate any object in .NET we call new give me an array that will store six integers okay so in this one variable I can store six integers and then down here I'm going to alt drag I held down alt and drag my mouse I'll type ages sub equals, and then to store something in this very first cell in my array, that's going to be cell number zero. You might think it's one, but it's actually cell number zero. I'll talk about why in a different video. So the first item in our array is cell number zero. Cell number one, I want 27. Cell two, cell three, cell four. I don't know why I said six here, because we actually have five. Okay, so. Looking at our array, ages sub 0, that's 25, ages sub 1, 27, ages sub 2, 23, so on and so forth. And now, down here, to print the individual ages, I can say, well, 
ages sub parenthesis and go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then down here, let's actually comment this part out for a sec. Control KC, Control F5. You can see the output is identical to what we had before as far as displaying the individual ages. But now that I have these ages in, in their own individual cells and I can index, is what we call indexing into an array, I can index into this array using these consecutive values, I can actually go through the array using a for loop. So for tab tab for the autocompletion. Index i, let's start it out at zero because our first element is at zero. And then I want to go the length of the array. The array has five items. So I'll put five there. I'll hit enter to come down into our for loop here. Console right line ages sub i. I hope that makes sense. Let's actually step through this. I'm going to hit F11 and scroll back up here. And we'll F10. Ages is a variable that's stored on my stack still. We'll say this is the bottom of the stack. Remember, there's stack and heap. And this is ages. Actually, I'm just going to label that memory out here as ages. Ages. And ages is a 4-byte reference that is storing the address of this array object out there. But it's not yet because we haven't executed this line of codes. A ages is actually null. The default value for a reference on the stack is null. Thank you, .NET, for taking care of that for us. But once I have 10 on this, and when I hover over ages, it's like, oh, it's, a, it's an array of five integers. And I can hit the plus sign, and I can see that they're all default values of 0. So let's come in here and execute this first line of code, F10. And now we can see that the first item in the array is 25, F10. The next item in the array will be 27, F10, F10. F you can see that we're filling up our array, 25, 27, 23, 34, F10 on that last one. And now ages is full. And there are five elements in the array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we index them using 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Arrays are indexed to 0 based. I'll talk about that in a video not too far out in the future. And I can just for loop through this and F10, I less than 5, I is less than 5, because I is 0 right now. And ages sub I, or ages sub 0, will be 25. So when I F10 right there, 25 prints to the screen. Okay, F10, F10, I increments, and I goes to 1. So ages sub I, or ages sub 1, is 27. That'll print 27 to the screen. And we can so on and so forth. F10 through all of this. And I think we're done. Look at our result. 25, 27, 23, 34, 36. So we have this nice consecutive data structure, consecutive sequence consecutive container because it contains several values it's a basic array let's look at all the ages i want to add them up well instead of saying um ages sub zero ages sub one ages sub two ages sub three i can actually just use this loop to my advantage int total age we'll say total age gets zero we'll start total age out at zero and then in here i'm just going to say total age plus equals ages sub i Okay, let's add this element, and then next time through the loop, we'll add the next element. Next time through the loop, we'll add the next element, and so on and so forth, until we get done. So I can control L and delete that line. And then come down here and console write line total age, and total age will store the actual total age for everybody. Whew! Okay, so there you go. That's, that's arrays in a nutshell. We're going to examine. There's all sorts of different types of arrays. We're doing some enumeration. We can look at for each and those kind of things. So hold on, this is just the bare bones beginning.